Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center. Today we got four inches of snow. I wanted to talk about some of the challenges with rabbit tractors. And obviously here in Michigan, it's a little too early to be running the tractor. You know, we can run these spring, summer, and fall. We're gonna talk all about it, some modifications that we did. Stick with us, here we go. So today I'm really excited to use the new DJI mic. I've needed a cordless mic for years and no more wind. Looking forward to having some really good crisp audio. Uh, today I want to talk about some of the things we did with this this rabbit tractor. Now uh, you can see that we've got a snowstorm here today. It's actually just wrapping up and should be snowing off and on for probably the next couple hours. And there's a little gap in the weather. I wanted to come out here and talk about this. Now right now this two inch by four inch cage wire it was a little too big, even when these rabbits were about eight weeks old. Luckily I was here, I don't know if this would have been fatal or not, but I found a rabbit halfway stuck out this little two inch by four inch hole. I had to push the rabbit back in. It hasn't happened since, but that was about a week ago. And it looked like the rabbit was pretty well lodged in there. So who knows if it would have just, you know, stopped breathing or what, but you know, running, hardware cloth around the outside, at least on the bottom. Um, even in Michigan, when we don't have predators like snakes or um, ferrets or fishers or things that are kind of squeezing through this, uh, it's not really a problem. But as far as the rabbits getting out like that, that is a problem. So I would actually recommend uh, hardware cloth in the future. I'm probably gonna wrap hardware cloth around the bottom of this. Also, we did a modification on the handles. We also piloted a couple holes in the handle and we added a two by three. It's right around 15 inches. It makes it really easy to engage the wheels and I uh, wanted to share that because what a, what a different feel with that handle. Also, when it's snowy and frozen like this, you know, we had to come out and we had to, you probably can't see this on the video, maybe you can, but there's a four cup bowl in there. We brought out a bowl of water so we could make sure these rabbits were hydrated uh, because these bottles are frozen so they can't get the water out of it. Now we can't move this tractor around with the snow, the weather, it looks like the, the snow is gonna be here for a couple days. And that's why we were feeding a little bit of pellet. So if we had to lean on the pellet a little bit more, we can. So I recommend to, to everyone to feed at least a little bit of pellet. That way the rabbits are still adjusted to it. And uh, you don't have to, you know, the portion is up to you. you. Of course, you don't have to feed the same amount when they're eating a lot of grass and you're moving this tractor around. But if you have to, you know, say you're getting just a lot of rain and, you know, moving the tractor around in rainy grass, that's not really gonna be a problem. You know, often folks think that they're gonna get um, like a fungus on the grass and the rabbits are gonna die from a fungus. Now that, that is something that can happen. You wanna make sure when you're moving the tractor around, you're not moving it over, say, a brown fungus. You can see these patches in the lawn. And I did speak to someone that did uh, lose a litter by moving them over uh, grass fungus. So just be aware where you're moving them. In most cases, rain isn't gonna bother your rabbits. So just gonna be a little bit more moisture on the grass. You know, what I do is I throw in some branches, I throw in some hay, especially when, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of snow or a lot of rain like this. That way they have some food that'll keep everything moving through their digestive system. Well, that was a big jump. Like we got about three to four inches of snow. It was flying sideways, so it was coming from the south it looked like. So I was about to put the, the tarp over this side, but it actually didn't really get too snowy. You know, there's lots of ways to raise your rabbits and running them in tractors, uh, especially for the last chapter until you harvest or even if you were just having a pet. I mean, what a fun way to, to have your rabbit. So as of right now, these rabbits have been in here um, just about a month and none of the wood is chewed up yet. And of course, the longer you keep the rabbits in here, the more they're gonna chew on the wood. So, you know, but throwing in some branches and some hay really helps them. It's good for their teeth too. And they don't have to chew up the, the tractor. But you know, one thing I experienced watching these rabbits, it's an enjoyable way to, to raise your livestock. And you know, as long as you move them every day and you're not keeping them in there for too long and you have a system where you're feeding them until about eight weeks, because at eight weeks, that's when they start to accumulate and eat a lot more pellet. You know, you can move them out and this is a great system. Uh, you know, you can, you can wean a lot sooner too, but again, we talk about putting up some safety, some hardware cloth, that way they don't escape and, and get into trouble based on where you are in the country, what kind of predators you have. Maybe you're gonna wanna do the whole thing in hardware cloth to keep the snakes out and, and uh, the other predators. 
maybe incorporate an electric fence if you have bigger predators. So I can put a video up in the corner. So if you guys would like to see more rabbitry content, we offer that on our website. We offer online courses and we're always adding videos and content to that. The videos that you see on YouTube, uh, we're always gonna add free videos to YouTube, but the videos are more detailed. They have more resources in our courses and we're always adding that to keep it up to date. It's kind of like our elite membership. This year we're actually uh, adding a beekeeping course to, so folks can start running on a small scale, their own apiary to generate some, some beekeeping products. You know, here at the Rabbitry Center, we do things a little bit different. We've always raised our rabbits in kindling totes. And you know, we just had a litter, uh, two litters the other day. So if you ever see a doe mustaching, it's probably a good idea that you put in a nesting box just in case. I mean, just for a precaution. Uh, you know, this litter over my shoulder, last night I seen Mama Doe mustaching, where you have a bunch of straw, looks like a mustache. So I put her in a nesting box just in case. This is actually a rescue. A previous customer got out of rabbits. She had, uh, she dropped off two rabbits. And I came out here about four or five hours later and a nest was full of baby rabbits. So if you ever see that, just wanted to share that. Um, put one, put a nesting box in there for a precaution. We were lucky enough to have a sale. Someone is interested in these two. They already purchased them. Uh, but I had to call and let them know, hey, you can pick the buck up, but the the mama rabbit is gonna be detained for about five to six weeks. We don't have rabbits frozen on the cage wire. And you know, that's why we started to use that system. We keep our bucks cool in the summer and we keep our, our kits safe, our litters clustered in that kindling tote. So we have a, a video that will show you right through the, the whole system. And a lot of times people ask me if that's clickbait, but because it says the title is called Stop Using Nesting Boxes, but we don't use nesting boxes for the initial birth, but at day 10, we move them out to the nesting boxes and, and we walk you right through the whole system and we just do that for safety and so we can inspect the rabbits regularly. We also designed another uh, nesting box that mimics a nesting box on its side and I can put a video up in the corner to show you what that's all about. And, and this is to really help us save the rabbits, limit our losses and uh, on the course we cover all this curriculum in an order. And there's there's lots of content on there, never before seen videos, so be sure to take advantage of that. If you haven't heard our podcast, be sure to check that out. It's wherever you listen to your podcast, it's uploaded everywhere on all those different platforms. Uh, there's a link down below, just click more. But we just did a podcast, the 20 most common rabbitry questions, and you can test your skills if you uh, listen to that, maybe when you're on a car ride or when you're working. But the snow's actually starting to come down now, so. I'm going to wrap this up. So be sure to let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll get back to everybody. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.